Uh, let me just give you an analogy. I didn't check, I should have. In the 1930s, was there a debate at this uh, auspicious place? Was there a debate over the following proposition? That, uh, that Nazi Germany, that Great Britain is a greater threat to peace than Nazi Germany. Or Nazi Germany is a greater threat to peace than Great Britain. Was there a debate in the 1930s? That is a perfect analogy to what we are debating tonight. Nazi Germany is to Israel what, uh, Nazi Germany was to Britain what Hamas is to Israel. Whether you agree with Israeli policies or not, and I don't agree with all Israeli policies, it is irrelevant. The question is, is that analogy fair? So let me ask you a question. I'll take you in a moment. Actually, in two moments. But let me, let me begin. Who is the greater threat to peace? Let's forget Israel, okay? Who is the greater threat to peace uh, in Syria? ISIS or Israel? Who is the greater threat to peace in Lebanon? Hezbollah or Israel? Who is the greater threat to peace in Egypt? The Muslim Brotherhood or Israel? Do you understand? In every case, everyone in this room would acknowledge that ISIS is a greater threat to peace in Syria than Israel. In every person in this room, I have to believe, even for Professor Schlein, would have to agree that ISIS is a greater threat that the Muslim Brotherhood is a greater threat, and that Hezbollah is a greater threat. All of a sudden, we change the entire scenario because it is now Hamas instead of Hezbollah, or ISIS, or Muslim Brotherhood. Number two, on, 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 on just on this issue, just appealing to your common sense. In modern, in modern history, every war has been between a free state and a police state, or two police states. I cannot think of a 20th century example of any other. And the same holds true here. You have the police state of Hamas. If you differ with Hamas, they kill you. Where in the world, other than Israel, does anyone ever argue that the free state doesn't want peace and the police state wants peace? There is no other example on earth there is no other example on earth of a country targeted for extinction. None. 220 some odd countries in this world. Only Israel is targeted for extinction. And we have a debate on whether the, the, the state targeted for extinction is the barrier to peace. That is quite a leap of faith. In the age of beheadings, as you have tragically experienced here in the UK, we have a debate. Hamas is a kindred spirit to ISIS and Hezbollah and Boko Haram. What do you think? They're an exception? All of those are monstrous. But Hamas, they're, they're a terrific bunch who really want peace. If it only weren't for settlements. There were no settlements prior to 1967. Why wasn't there peace? Israel would dismantle the settlements for real peace in a moment because the Israeli people are much more interested in sending their kids to college, and in having a peaceful life, and in making a good living, and inventing more medical and technological devices than they are in fighting wars. This would be the first free state in history to prefer war to peace. It is highly, highly unlikely. The Hamas Covenant, which you heard from Adam earlier, the Hamas Covenant, it says, Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it, just as it obliterated others before it. If I could have extra time over eight minutes, I would take your question, but I have too much to get through. The Islamic resistance movement is a distinguished Palestinian movement whose allegiance is to Allah and whose way of life is Islam. It strives to raise the banner of Allah over every inch of Palestine. Yale University translation. I'm sure they didn't use inch in the, in the, in the original. On that exact point. So that, that, that is what Hamas is devoted to. Now, yes, I can? Oh, then please. So all of the organizations that you're citing as a threat to peace just happen to be Arab and or Muslim. Could you explain to me why you think that might be the case that you only view these organizations as threats to peace? 
I don't. Okay. You, you, obviously, those of you who applauded perceived the profundity of the question that I didn't. I don't quite understand. They are all a threat to peace. That is correct. Why did I only pick on Arab Muslim? I said Boko Haram. That is not Arab. Arab and or Muslim. Yes, Arab and or Muslim. That is correct. The only beheading groups in the world today, to the best of my knowledge, are Arab or Muslim. Why do you think that is, in your estimation? Why do I think that is? Sad to say, it was answered by Arab intellectuals at the United Nations, because the Arab world is, in a, is a benighted place at this time. The status of women is particularly low. The Arab world translates fewer books in a year than, uh, in 10 years, than Greece, the entire Arab world translates fewer books than Greece does in one year. There is no interest in the foreign world. It is a benighted world, the Arab world. It is a tragedy. This is not anti-Arab. If you love Arabs, you have to understand how low the level, the moral level of the Arab world at this point is. And that has nothing to do with individual Arabs who may be saintly. But that is the, that is the dominant moral state. You are taught that you cannot judge civilizations as if Britain and, and, uh, uh, and Mali are on the same uh, moral level. That is, to, that is to give up on hope for humanity, to claim that there is no civilization that has produced something better than something else. So that, that, that is the tragic reason. They're not beheading people uh, in, in Western civilization. They are in the Arab and Muslim worlds, and not the entire Muslim world. Now, why then? My second part is to answer the question, why is something so obvious? that Israel wants peace and that Hamas wants to destroy Israel. Why is that debated at one of the most illustrious academic institutions on earth, Oxford? I have two answers. One is, there has been a broken moral compass in the intellectual world in the West for the last perhaps 80 or 100 years. I will give you an example. I studied at Columbia University at the School of International Affairs. I was taught by brilliant, and they were brilliant, professors that the United States and the Soviet Union were moral equivalents. It was capitalism versus communism. Two economic theories, that's all. Neither was better than the other. You may not recall because you weren't born, many of you, but Ronald Reagan, the President of the United States, called the Soviet Union at one point an evil empire. He was lambasted. He was dis declared by Columbia and Harvard and Yale and Princeton and the New York Times a fool for having the temerity to make a moral statement about the Soviet Union, a place that had created the Gulag Archipelago and killed 40 million of its own people, not to mention a genocide in Ukraine. That's, that's what has, per that is what I tell you students, that's what has taken over in Western universities a, a, a moral, a broken moral compass that truly calls evil good and good evil. I went through this, and I, I'm afraid many of you are going through this. This evening is one such example. And finally, the media. The media gives you a jaundiced view of the world. Gaza starts a war to kill as many Israelis as possible. And all you see on the BBC and Sky News, as we see in America on our TV, is dead Gazans. That's all you see. I shudder to think if in World War II the same media covered World War II, you would have seen far more dead German civilians than dead British civilians. But it takes a very, very frail moral mind to believe that you determine right and wrong by the number of dead. That's what we are told. Look at how many Gazans were killed and how few Israelis. Well, look at how many few, how few Brits were killed and how many more Germans were. Does that make the Germans right in World War II? That's, that's the facile moral thinking that pervades our world. So I end with this. And that is, it would be a tragedy, in my opinion, if it came out, if it were known, the Oxford Union actually determined that Israel and not Hamas were the greater threat to peace. Outside of the world of academia, it is pretty clear 
It's got to be clear here, too. Thank you very much.